this program of scheduling and for 10 o'clock this morning. I recently fell out. It's not that person, but Mr. Desmobinia. Let us give the video. Thank you. Thank you very much. Good morning, members of the High Table. Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. So ladies and gentlemen, I want to thank everybody for coming and uh, let's start with the minutes of silence prayers because in anything we do, we must recognize the presence of God Almighty. So I'm asking everybody to pray at least for our own uh, religious denomination. Uh, advisor, a special advisor to the president. And uh, the whole issue, the theme is around non violence message for youth in Sierra Leone. It must not be an option for the 2018 elections. This thing is extremely appropriate in that in recent times we've been seeing the violence perpetrated by our youths. And as I look around, 50 to 60 percent of us present in the hall are youths. And we are the most vulnerable because when it's time for politicking, Politicians come about and give us all what we think is essential, including drugs, money, etc., to perpetuate violence amongst ourselves. Let's see Dr. Mary Okomo, who is the country director of UN Women. Can you please put our hands for that? Very kind of people that will be here even before the program commenced, uh, in an hour or so. So, ladies and gentlemen, uh, on the agenda, we will have one of the chairman's uh, welcome address, and that's what I will be doing to ensure that we take the message out. That's why I'm happy I'm seeing students, representatives from different youth groups, you know, representative institutions like the UN Women and all those who will be joining us. I'm so sad not to see the CIA police present here as I'm talking, because they have a major role to play in the implementation of their duties to ensure that we have a non violent election. So we are having individuals who will be making different statements but for now, we're having a profile, the profile of the OE and uh, the Organization of African Youth. And I believe, yes, the ambassador himself is a place to give us. Let's put our hands together for the African Youth Special Advisor and Ambassador George Wilson. Thank you. Good morning, ladies and gentlemen, Our Excellency. All the members of the high table and our co supporters on the table. Well, the Organization of African Youth is a youth based entity in Africa at right, that was set up at the presidential summit at Addis Ababa 2009. And it was set up specifically to look at issues affecting the youth all over Africa, defending them, advocating for them, and at the end of the day, see how best we can give them a connectivity support. Because of course, Africa, the continent at large, and Europe. It was so, so um, I'm pleased by that time, it was, we, by that time, we have the former United States President, which was Barack Obama, to be part of the establishment and the Queen of England. So the Organization of African Youth was established in Sierra Leone 2012. And a chapter we have was crowned and represented by Ambassador Abdul Kaloko, who is the country representative, but presently is not within the territory of Sierra Leone. So, but nevertheless, I step in the shoe to give a short brief about the open youth. And for some of the students to know that we have a lot of opportunities, both in Sierra Leone and Africa. And after my appointment, I've already finished the one-year appointment, and uh, due to my efforts, I have already had a second appointment, which will last for the next three years. <laughs> and I'll also be head of the fundraising continentally. 
and I launched that last year with alongside a OAUT Agro project which is championed by a young dynamic youth that is situated by the so we is all about open roads and we want to tell you that especially the you that we are here for you, we are here to protect you, we are here to defend you and our doors are open 24-7. Some of the things that we have done is that previously we are we are having about the international scholarship that we have. But fortunately last year, we have 500 scholarship. And this year, we are targeted to have 1,500 on various parts of the world. So, in addition to that, we are trying to see how those who will come on board with international for more investment. The youth of Sierra Leone, the opportunity is very much raised. So that's why, as youth, we are here to support you. But also, it's our collective responsibility to protect the authority of the established for us. It's our responsibility to defend the rest who have at the back of us. Because some of us who are fortunate to be having this caring of the mantle of leadership in the youth area, especially so I one of the things that have been putting us at the back is that we as youth, the mainstream youth, we have one or two issues to solve, and because of our, person, our personal grievances, we establish it a professionalism which has taken us back and will continue to get us at the back very very much more. But in order for us to see a very bright and a suitable ceremony, I guess we all should come and put our hands on board. We all should be united, we all should be disciplined. And especially talk about disciplinarism Use of ceremony, so my friends will not want anybody who corrects us. And <laughs> for you to, to develop in life, you make a mistake. And you need somebody to guide you. But we always look at, look and see the people who guide us. We see them at different ways. Some are wicked to us, some are very um, uncompassionate to us, but at the end of the day, it's for our own good. Because I can imagine when I was coming up, I go through some of those things also. At some point, I look at my dad and he hates me. But then I, today, I'm here at Cloudy City in as African News Special Advisor. I talk to presidents all over the world. I talk with dignitaries and at the same time mix with the youth down here because that's my own responsibility. And for myself, my dad always taught me to see myself as a servant because he is a local preacher. And uh, at least with that correction, I'm able to do something they like to be. So the rest of you people out there, the rest of the youth, seven youth, let's come and go. So let's embrace the people who corrupt us. Let's find a legal icon, a discipline icon, somebody that will put us straight, not somebody that will at all time giving us a praises message and praises messages which will do us harm than good. So in short terms, I would like to stop with us.
Thank you. Thank you very much. <clears throat> Ambassador George Diaz Wilson Jr. for that short but in depth uh, statement. Uh, I picked up the origin of the institution 2009, and in this short period, you've been offering scholarships to desirable youths all over the world, encouraging investment, and also interfacing with head of state and dignitary in the sector. And that's very promising for our youths. In the area of investment, this is very essential because even today at 98.1, for those who listen, it's because most of our youths are on a board. That's why they are being infiltrated to cause me here. Look at the elections in Liberia. Nobody died. From electioneering process to campaigning to elections being results out, they voted twice. They went to run off. Nobody died. And for us, just a one day rally, people have started dying. We are worried. Because amongst us, we have people who are children, we have people who are wives, and it's very difficult to travel to another country based on the experience we had during the Red War. So we are advising all those who are fermenting violence, let them know that instead of you coming to us with the violence, we need you to take the violence to your own house, or your community, or your own community, so that it doesn't spill out. We are not in possession of the things that ferment violence. We are in violence, and we are so happy that international institutions like the UN Union are for. And that brings me to mind. Women are so important. But even the alphabet, A to Z, the one that more women most is the blue. Ask me how. Even the spelling of the word is a woman. Start with the blue. When they get married, they become wives. It's the blue. When they want to give back, they take them to the world. It's the blue. When the husbands die, they become women. It's the blue. Women can be wrong. It's the blue. They can be welcoming. It's the blue. But somebody can. Some can be witches. Hello? I did a research and I noticed that most, most words that start to be are not amazing. There are few words that start to be that are nice. For example, diamond, development. But most words that start to be are not nice. Help me. Get. Disaster. Devil. Very brilliant people in the house tonight. Which other one? Disease. Wow. Deficiency. Somebody want to say that I'm sure, but I said no, that's not the way. Hello? Ladies and gentlemen, we want to continue in this direction. And we are about to have a few statements from a few personalities in the house tonight. We are about to hear the first statement, and mind you, the time allocated is five minutes. If you can do it below five minutes, it's nice. So, ladies and gentlemen, I want to introduce a perfect gentleman, a man of excellence. He's been doing well in a different institutions as well. He wants to get us a welcome. Mr. Ezekiel King, to give us a final report. 2018 elections will be violence free. This is a question we cannot answer, but we are all hoping it will. However, this question can be answered by the various stakeholders who will participate in this process. The most vulnerable of these are the youths. They are the most targeted because they are young, they have the energy, self-opinionated, and they feel they have been marginalized. These are the targets of perpetrators of violent activities as they can be easily influenced and manipulated. The message I have for you today, the youth, do not allow yourselves to be used as instruments of violence. Do not allow your rights as responsible citizens to be abused and misused as agents of violence. Violence must not be an option for you to vent out your dissatisfaction over the electoral process or its outcome, but explore other legitimate options for registering your grievances rather than resorting to violence. Remember, you are the future of this country, and the destiny of this nation rests with you. 
you are tomorrow leaders. So you, the politicians, elections are not you wanting to have power at all costs. Exercise political tolerance. You have a duty to educate your supporters to refrain from all acts of violence and riotous conduct. You should not give lip services to the anti-violence campaigns that are going on or appending your signatures to the various codes of conduct provided by the PPRC, NEC, and the Serrano Police. But you should demonstrate your commitment to this campaign by ensuring that your supporters conduct themselves as responsible and peace-loving citizens on the days prior to and after the elections. You should make active use of your aspiring councillors and parliamentarians to reach out to their constituents and educate them and commit them to a violent free behavior. We continue to call on the Serrano police and all other security apparatus to ensure a violent free election period. We request them to continue to be proactive in their drive to make this election peaceful and free of violence. I must commend their initiative of embarking on a peace march tomorrow as a way of raising awareness of the need for a peaceful and violence-free elections and for the public to know that violence is not an option in the 2018 elections. The role of the media is also commendable in the anti-violence campaign. Continue to provide a platform for the anti-violence messages to move far and wide. Endure with creating the forum for accommodating diverse political views and persuasions in your media houses. This all goes to build confidence in the election process and to reinforce the message that violence is not an option in the 2018 elections. I am therefore appealing to all stakeholders, especially the political parties and their supporters, specifically the youths, not to engage in violent activities during this election period, which ranges from hate speech to looting, destruction of innocent lives and properties, and physical attacks on innocent citizens. Let us remember that Sierra Leone, now we all know, and it is bigger than any political party or presidential flag bearer. The answer to my rhetoric question above, would we have a violence-free election, is yes. That is, if we all cooperate and play our part. I wish us all a peaceful election. Thank you very much. This is very essential. And one thing the youth should realize is that famous Afro-American activist, Louis Farrakhan, once said, and I quote, that every generation out of relative obscurity has a task to perform. They either betray it or fulfill it. End of the quote. I just wish that this our own generation will not betray the tax will be rendered to our people. I also want to appeal our colleagues to our colleagues, the students, don't follow the bad students. What is happening now is most political parties that come out, you have these bad guys joining them, wearing their t-shirts to appear as if these are the bad guys in these parties. It happens for all parties, not just APC, not just SLP. These are things we are seeing every day. But we, I mean, that's why I would have loved the police to be here. Never mind the police are doing their best, but I believe they are outnumbered. We need more policemen in this country as elections are approaching. Ladies and gentlemen, we don't want to spend much time on that. I want to go to the next speaker. The Special General of Police is not in, neither is the representative. So we are going to the next speaker who is going to be the representative from one of the organizations that have since the inception of our democracy have been doing so much for peace to prevail. They will come in different forms, UNDP, UN Women, UWHO, etc. All of these are UN organizations. But for this specific, we have a wonderful woman of excellence, Kenyan born Dr. Mary Okome, who is the country director of the UN.
but it is not gender-based violence. When violence takes male to male or female to female. So why is it important when a man makes violence against a woman? Can anybody tell me why that is significant? Anyone? Have you ever heard of uh, gender-based violence? Yes. Okay. <coughs> Tell me why do you think that is significant and why we should address it not only in elections but in society in all of our various uh, places that we come from. Can somebody just help? Yes. The individual, the man must possess all the strength to violate the woman and that's why it is important and is needed to address in the community. I think this it based on culture. Mm -hmm. That is most important. Because official district people they always take advantage over the women. Mm -hmm. And I believe that is very wrong at this time. So we have to change that perspective. Thank you. Yeah. On the other hand, men naturally most men are violent. Yes. To be sincere, yes. even in some minor argument between their wife or extra, it will be as long as she's a woman, they always take advantage of that situation. When violence comes from a man to a woman or to a girl, it's an exercise of power over. It's an exercise of control. And this is, and, and it is not only that men are physically stronger. There are very strong women who can beat men yes. and, and probably do also. But the significance of, 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 of gender-based violence, framing it as gender-based, meaning from one gender to another, from men to women, is an exercise of control, is an exercise of power and it is not only physical power because violence can come out and be expressed in addition to physically it can also be verbal it can also be psychological so it's a, an exercise of control and based on I like what he said culture Culture that presupposes that male is stronger, is bigger, is better than. So it is in relationship to that social relationship that a man believes and are raised up to believe that they are better and stronger than women. And and exercise that power to keep the women where? Down. Where they belong, in quotes, down. down. Okay? So, let me read you the definition of violence against women. Sometimes it's called violence against women, interchangeably used by uh, uh, development uh, work. Gender-based violence or violence against women and girls is used interchangeably. It's any act, please listen very carefully, it's any act that results or, or is likely to result in physical, sexual, or psychological harm. So if you're not beating them physically, don't think that you're not undertaking gender-based violence. I have had insults meted at women. I don't know which ones in Sierra Leone, in Creo, in Limba, in Mende, eh? Timene. Eh? You are as stupid as... Can somebody finish that one for me? Stu as stupid as... A monkey. You are as stupid as... Any other? A monkey? A dog. a dog, absolutely. 
when they say son of a bitch, a crop of leadership, of youth, that will save this country. And your responsibility, now you have agreed to take the responsibility to create a society where men and women, boys and girls, have same opportunities are valued in the same way, in regard, in attitude, in behavior. When, when I have been in classes training equality and human rights, they, they, they tell you how, oh, my mother, oh, I love my mother. I love my mother. Oh, if anybody hates my daughter, they will know who and what I'm made of. So which women don't we like? <laughs> if, if somebody touches your mother, or your daughter, or your sister, eh, that person will see fire. <laughs> so which women don't we like? That we should just beat like snakes. My dear, all of you here are my children, quite frankly. All of you here, all, all, qualify to be my children. And I want to speak to you from that level of sincerity, that if you want to be a man respectable and worthy of your name, is exercise the respect for women. All women, not only your mother or daughter or sister. Take a look at our own election. 2012, you will take notice that it was very peaceful because we do it very earlier. So we told the people that Sierra Unions will still continue with that kind of trend. But more or less, that some of the youth in Sierra Leone today, uh, I would say, due to peer pressure, Due to the last, the last um, support, because one thing you to find difficult in CRU, we do not have enough support. Even to do this program, after um, we are almost wrapping up at like the yeah, was got to some kind of headache that, oh, I'm going to have fun to do this in Seattle, because most of the time, Actually, I'm part of the government again. That's a suitable thing. I'm working for the government of Sierra Leone and I'm working for President Coleman and the people of Sierra Leone. But my own focus, I preach the country first. I develop and look at the youth of Sierra Leone first rather than a political party. So, Unfortunately, I know it's not everybody in the government will appreciate me for that. But my own um, mind will be more peaceful because I need God appreciation. Because I know that when God appreciated me, <laughs> I have all the appreciation that I need in this world. So in order for that, that's why we are doing the launching today. Now, we want to give a kudos to Zen Bank. And uh, because they do this, let me say, in three days. <laughs> it's not difficult. That's why I said, if you have God on your side, that will be easy and simple for you. I talk with the CEO and it was about getting into Sierra Leone and he said, oh, send me, see me tomorrow. I'll be in Sierra Leone, see me tomorrow. Then I made him at his office. He said, write to, he said, write me officially. After the writing, straight on when I went to him, he called the head of the Sierra Leone branch there and he said, I need you to approve this thing. So, that's how it all started. And in three days, 
for now being ready for doing all of these things. Thank you very much. Well, I know it was due to, there was a program I was watching about a few, few days back where bank in Ghana do a whole hospitalism project without them getting any command from the government or from anybody. So then I write it, I, I, I give out a press release that look, this is what other banks in other countries are doing. So it's our time, banks in Sierra Leone, because sometimes you look at the revenue they are earning and what they give back, it's totally different and less. So you see, so at the end of the day, I think that is one of the issues in which the Zenith Bank look at and then say, let's do this as fast as we can. And uh, we, are hoping to, um, we are hoping to have more sponsors because we need to target the whole country. And uh, 5,000 printing of our bill <laughs> means nothing of passing on this message. For Liberia, we do about 75,000 and bills for Liberia, and it was not enough. It was not enough. So we have not even reached 0.01% about this uh, preaching. Because we are, we are able to do 10 banners, this is one, and after today, these have already ended. So, this will be to an end, sorry. So in order for that, we need something like 50 more banners to go right across the country. We need 50 more banners. We need about, um, let me see, 70,000 printing of this and build more. And uh, we need the vehicles, we need motorcycles. But I've already asked the president, so I hope he will cope. Because I want to say in a, a big thanks to him in his absence. Because if you can see a young man like me today, right, holding a leadership position, both in Sierra Leone and international, trust me, he's the first to do that in the history of Sierra Leone. If we give it to the right person, we are here to enjoy it. We are talking about companies, institutions who have a minimum of 50 staff, right? They are not, um, it's not over 100. We do not have over, over 100 companies who have a staff of 50 people. So we need more investment. We need more investors. By the grace of God, we'll be having 10 investors for me within the next few months. Seven from Nigeria. Three from the United States. One from Ghana. And the minimum of employment will be on the other 50 people. One thing as you to gain which will last is monitoring. Forget about the government. As you to take up the responsibility. Forget about we are the future leaders. No. We are the leaders of today. Me, even President Koma, I tell me, oh, future leader. I said, no. I'm not a future leader. I'm a leader of today. Because trust me, if I should become a president in the next 10 years, then I must be responsible now. If you must become a CEO of a bank for the next 10 years, then you must have responsibility now. 
So how then you call it a future leader? So we are leaders of today. As youth, violence must not be an option for this 2018 election. Whether you are connected to any political ground, trust me, whatever you do, we tell of you. Whatever you do today, we tell of you in the future. Some of the youths, oh man, they won't chuck. And he took you. Yeah, what you do for the man? All the man take it and say, say, for it. Now, so that they are in here, allow them for common use, say, for go campaign. Where you don't go through for that. If they go turn up at them by road, that's in the dollar. But you tell the police they don't spend it now, one month today. They go pull you, you get the power. You know, one for all that they will connect to the president for my body, they are turning up at them by road. Why? Because of the thinking, the mindset, the attitude. So let nobody influence you. Let no one influence, influence you. As youth, let us be vigilant. Let us be super. Let us be focused. The APC and the SFP. So, in enough for me to open, enough for pass one hour. Why? Yana Bo, Yana Makini, Bo, APC, not for can make anything here. Is Bo not part of Sierra Leone? Makini is not part of Sierra Leone. SFP, not for develop here. The last time when I was doing so with the president, we went to Kenema. Trust me, majority of the things that was established in that place, they have destroyed it. <laughs> Before they go to the, the table, now call it, I tell Mr. President, tell the people they are saying, and it will employ my eye again. So you come up, nothing, no development in the car with my eye. I said, tell them, say, no development. You need a cow in the yard. Why? So after that, they now that they take up responsibility. Then this guy then call. Hey, we see this water tank in Woko. That's why you know, you know, get smoke from in America. In America, but we don't tell you that. I don't know what I'm talking about. No. President Kumar, don't tell me that. You see, why? Let them know that anything you want to pay, the money they put for buyer, go make the procure, not to free, go make go take things free. Institution go take things free, can, no? You the procure for that. You the buyer. So you let them have 50 million. Appreciate it. So, as you let take up the responsibility, a refugee shall I tell or a or um, so you may say a tell. A refugee shall I tell or anything say when are they responsible for good business and they go go the good. You know, man can say so so they. Then people are can do good. You know, go and go to the good for good guy. You know, money to make make the bad. Let's take up responsibility as you. So in order for that, by the power invested in me, as the African Youth Special Advisor, and on behalf of His Excellency Dr. Anasai Kuruma, the government of Sierra Leone, we all present at the Presidential Committee 
in Africa, I want to officially launch this non-violence program in Sierra Leone to be dated the 2nd February 2018. I thank you.
I just want to thank everybody. Um, this was a very short notice, really. Um, he had sleepless nights for like a whole week, you know, trying to put this together. Um, but we really appreciate the time that you, you've taken out of all your busy schedules to come and grace this occasion and the launching of this. Um, we have work to do the next few years, you know, so just um, let us not relax. This is our country. No matter what we do, nobody else is going to help us to get it together. It is our land. We should own this area. It is ours. So thank you so much for taking such time and for the time to come.